Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. October 16th, Hugh Latimer. One of Hugh Latimer's earliest memories was of when he was four years old. He remembered buckling his father's armor before he went into battle. When Latimer was 14, he attended Cambridge University, and he became a scrupulously observant Catholic priest. He strongly opposed Martin Luther and the Reformation, and he was a popular preacher. He became chaplain to King Edward VI, but about himself he said, I was as obstinate a papist as any was in England. Then he met Thomas Bilney. They walked and talked. In fact, they walked so much and so publicly that the place they walked became known as Heretic's Hill. At the White Horse Tavern, Latimer regularly met with men who held a reformed view of the church. Because so much Lutheran was talked there, the pub became known as Little Germany. On this date in history, in 1555, under the Catholic Queen Mary, with a comrade named Ridley, Hugh Latimer was burned at the stake for opposing Catholicism. As the fire blazed, Latimer said, Be of good comfort, Master Ridley, and play the man. We shall this day light such a candle by God's grace in England, as I trust shall never be put out. In Christ, even the weakest man is strong. Hugh Latimer was devoted to school, to scholarship, and to his church. He was a man of wit and of stature, around 30 years old, and admired by all at the University of Cambridge. Even his name had a certain celebrity ring to it. But there was one thing Hugh Latimer was not. He was not part of the circle of believers at Cambridge, those who had placed their faith in Christ alone. Some were scholars and a few were faculty members, But in the eyes of Hugh Latimer, the believers were weak and misguided heretics in need of repentance. The believers met regularly to search the scriptures, and Hugh sometimes joined them just to debate with them and to urge them to abandon their misguided notions. He even insulted Master Stafford, a professor, and encouraged the youth at the school to abandon the professor's teachings. Some people said Latimer was like Saul before he became the Apostle Paul, zealous for the laws and ordinances of the church, but railing against reformed believers. The leader of the group of believers was Thomas Bilney, a sickly-looking fellow. Latimer thought Bilney might be an easy target to defeat, but Bilney was a prayer warrior who got on his knees and conquered men. Bilney found a way to share his faith in Christ and make Latimer his captive audience. He asked Latimer to hear his private confessions. Latimer assumed the straying prodigal was finally coming to his senses. Yes, of course he would hear the man's confessions. All of his friends would give up their folly as well, Hugh surmised. But in private confession, Thomas Bilney shared how he had come to faith in Christ. He shared how he could not find the forgiveness he had sought by keeping the laws and precepts of the church. He had, in fact, found no peace until he believed Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Latimer sat dumbfounded. This is not what he'd expected to hear. These were not the vain ramblings of a heretic. In fact, Latimer could feel his own heart opening to the strange new witness of the Holy Ghost speaking to him. Suddenly, he was struck by the war he had waged against God, and he began to cry out loud. Bilney tried to comfort him. Brother, though thy sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. But Latimer was overwhelmed by the love of God in Christ, and he yielded to the truth and cast himself upon the Savior. The priest became the penitent. It was a miracle of God's grace. Latimer said afterward, I learnt more by this confession than in many years before. From that time forward, I began to smell the word of God, 
and forsook the doctors of the schools in such fooleries. He was a changed man. The Bible holds this promise for us. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. In Christ, even the weakest man is strong. The power of your testimony can set a person free. Be bold. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real-life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. For today's story, we have a free one-page group discussion sheet available on our website. Please join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.